Hi. Now what I have here is a record of the number of cars parked in a particular car park each day throughout June. And the data that we've got here is not sorted. It's, it's recording each day as we go throughout the month of June. But we can't see any trends or get any feel for how the data is distributed. So one way of dealing with this raw data is to sort it out through what we call a stem and leaf diagram. I'll show you. What we do is we draw a line down like so and looking at this data we can see that the smallest number here is the 4 and the largest number is the 96. So we've got numbers ranging from 0 to just below 100. And what we do then is we start with 0 and we put 1, 2, 3 all the way down to 9. So we just finish that off 6, 7, 8 and 9. And then what we do is we have a key. A key that's telling us that let's just put it down here that if I have a number like say 8 here and a 2 here. What this means is that it represents 82 and this would be our key. So when we look at 35 I just go along to the 3 and write a 5. Take the 22 I go to the 2 and write a 2 for 22 and so on. When we come to the 4 we think of that as 0, 4. 65, put down the 5, and so on. And what you've got to be careful is that you put your numbers in columns. So when I now get to 47, we put that there. 26, we put this onto here. And 17 goes there. But you can see that this is starting to drift away from this column. So it would be a good idea to move that 7 in. For 28, okay, put that there. 42, now I don't want to put the 2 there under the 8. I need to put it underneath that 6. So make sure you keep your numbers in columns. Well, I've got that finished off now, and you can see the general trend in the shape. It's like a bar chart. You can see that in the 30s, we seem to have the most amount of cars. And as I say, you get a general shape here of the kind of distribution. Now, we also call this the stem, and these bits coming out here are called the leaves. But what we have here is an unordered stem leaf diagram. What we prefer to have is an ordered stem leaf diagram where we put the numbers in ascending order. Something like this. We start by drawing the stem again. So I'll bring it down here. Putting in our numbers from 0 to 9. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And then for this first one, well, that's fine, 0, 4. But when it comes on to this next row, then 11 would be the smallest value. So we put the 1 in there, and then the 12, and then the 7 for the 17, and then the 9 for the 19, and so on. So we just fast forward and here it is. Now you'll sometimes see, although you don't have to do it, it's just optional, a bracket giving the number of leaves that there are in each row. So we've got one for the four and four for this one and so on. And it's also a good idea just to check that your total comes to the same total as the number of values you've got up here, which is 30, because it is so easy just to miss one out. 
Now, you could have other stem leaf diagrams. For instance, I've got here the time in seconds for several athletes to run 100 meters is recorded. And what we've got here is our values go from, let's have a look, from 9.9 .9 all the way up to the highest value of 15.1. Here we are. So I need to have a stem leaf diagram where in this case we've got two digits on the stem. And you'll see by the key here we've got the 12 with the 8 is 12.8. So you should be able to see then that for 9.9 .9 it's written 09 and then with a 9. So keep the two digits going here, okay? So 099 is 9.9 .9 and so on. And this has been rearranged so that it is an ordered stem leaf diagram. Now there's another type of stem leaf diagram you can get. It's when we want to compare two sets of data on the same diagram. Like in this example, we've got the heights in centimetres of a group of 17-year-old male and female students. We've got the female's data and the male's data in a raw form. Now, assuming that we sorted the data out in ascending order of size, we could draw a stem and leaf diagram like this. It's called a back-to-back -back stem leaf diagram. We've got a key here where 15 and the line 4 represents 154 centimetres and we have that down the middle here. So you can see that if we had 1.6 and we were looking at this value here, this would be a height for a male student of 163 centimetres and you've got similar results for the females. So you can compare the distributions. You can see that the females seem to be slightly less tall than the males, the bulk of them. We've got quite a lot of the girls here but in the interval 160 centimetres up to 170 centimetres. And you can see the boys seem to be a lot taller here. Well anyway, you can compare distributions by putting them back to back. So I hope that's given you some idea then of the different types of stem and leaf diagrams and how we can represent these values in a key that can vary. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.